We're at the Sony booth with Juan once again, uh, talking about the FS700. You know, it's, it's a very popular camera. Uh, what I love about it is just the, the life that has been extended through all the upgrade paths that you guys have been offering. And now you kind of have two different options for it. So why don't you take us through the different package deals for people that are still new to the camera? Sure. So the camera has a capability uh, of operating a 4K RAW via a single VNC. And something that people don't understand is this cable could be very long. So as long as it's a high quality cable and uh, it doesn't exceed that 3G uh, capabilities, it's possible to extend this maybe even 50 feet. So you can, you can have a system where you have a camera on a crane and, and a recorder at a longer distance. Now this is a Sony system, uh, the Sony RAW recorder, the R5 recorder that was originally created for the F5 and 55. And via this uh, interface adapter, uh, HXR IF5, it is possible then to dock the uh, Sony recorder and, and record raw to the access card. The same workflow as the F5 and 55. Uh, the signal is limited to 12-bit uh, resolution. It's a 16-bit signal, but it only has a 12-bit payload within the 16-bit. Uh, onto the, uh, but you can use the same tools, the same post-production, the, uh, the advantage of the very fast and the economy of the compression that we use, the very mild uh, 3.1 uh, to 1 compression on, on the roll. So this is a very powerful and beautiful system. Uh, but we also invited third-party companies to develop uh, raw recorders for the FS700. And uh, uh, Convergence Design was the first company that, that uh, was, they were developing the uh, Odyssey and they had the horsepower to process the signal. We developed an SDK that uh, takes our signal, our proprietary signal, and then presents the Odyssey with an uncompressed raw signal. And then they can process this internally and record uh, Cinema DNG rule at 2K or 4K at the same frame rates that it's possible to do with this system. Uh, so at 2K up to 240 frames per second Cinema DNG and at 4K up to 60 frames per second Cinema DNG. But they went beyond. So with the Sony system we're recording raw uh, in the Odyssey they take that raw signal and then they <coughs> debayer it and compress it into ProRes 10-bit 422 HQ that is derived from the 12-bit 4K. So the image quality is truly extraordinary. So, and ProRes is such a common use codec. So I, th I think this is one of the huge, big advantages of the system. And at Cinegear, we are introducing this system, this very same system you see here that includes the Odyssey, with the two SSDs, uh, the FS700 software, uh, and the L-series battery adapter, uh, and this Vocus rig, this beautiful Vocus rig that is designed for this system uh, that allows you to position the Odyssey in the rear of the camera as we're showing here, uh, which is a really cool way to operate the camera because you can use this as a status monitor or for checking focus all the time, and you can use this for framing. Uh, or the Odyssey can be repositioned in the front with, uh, uh, to, the, to the left so that it can be used like Sax Zamboni operates a camera. The Vocus rig, we chose this because it's very comfortable to use. It uh, has the best balance that allows us the camera to position the camera in the best position according to the lens we're using. And, uh, uh, the, the camera, uh, also we're including a two-position posi uh, two of a fast charger, uh, additional battery uh, with the camera, and everything you see here, uh, the extender for the hand grip, and there's two models. One model that does not include a lens. In this case, we're showing the camera with a Metabones and a, a Canon EF lens or another model that has this zoom lens that is currently shown on this other rig. Uh, at the 18 to 200 is a power zoom lens. And with a power zoom lens, we're able to use a zoom rocker to achieve nice, smooth zooming, which no one else can do. So, so only Sony has that. And 
it, and or on a jib or something like that. It's very handy to have that Absolutely. power zoom option. Because uh, yeah, uh, there's times where I like on the EX1 being able to have power zoom, but you switch to a cinema left, the camera. Sometimes you have to sacrifice that. It's nice to kind of like have one camera that can do either option. There's this is this camera is probably the most versatile camera when it comes to lens choices. You can use so many different lenses. It has such a shallow flange. It's possible to use uh, Leica lenses or Canon or Nikon, PL lenses. Virtually any 35 millimeter lens uh, can be used on the camera. We use simple mechanical extenders without any kind of optics. Mm -hmm. Now this lens, 18 to 200. Is a 3563, not a constant aperture. It's a great all purpose lens. You guys came up with the 18 to 105 f4 constant, but because of the power zoom, there was a pillow zoom distortion. Mm -hmm. I understand that you're going to be working on a firmware update to allow the 700 to be able to work with that. That's absolutely correct. So, this fall, uh, late this fall, we will deploy a firmware update for the FS700 that will dynamically compensate to the geometric distortion correction to give you a perfectly nice. Uh, image without any any skew of the, of the horizon. And then it'll still be able to work with the zoom rocker then as well? It will definitely. So it it's, um, gives you a clean image throughout the entire zoom range. That lens uh, is, has even smoother zooming characteristics. So we, Sony is um, the only company because when, that has this capability at the moment. Uh, when we develop the E-mount, uh, we decided that these lenses would be made for motion, even though they were originally uh, sold with still cameras. But the iris opens and closes smoothly. It doesn't move in steps, because our competitors um, made their lenses for DSLRs, and the DSLR moves in steps, so they made it with a stepper motor. Uh, we made the lens with the linear motor, so the, the iris can move smoothly, the zoom can move smoothly. We have very high torque. And this is why we're able to offer these zoom lenses and uh, none of our competitors have caught, caught up with us yet. Now, for the compensation, um, you know, you're working with a 4K sensor. You're using most of the, most of the pixels already in the sensor. Is there going to be any degradation to the image when compensating for that pillow zoom? No, yeah, because it's all done from the 4K signal. Uh, with very fine resolution. So this is already, um, we have this in other models and there are no artifacts. Right. Now, in addition to the 18105, at, at NEB we got a chance to see a new E-mount cinema lens. I'm looking forward to that myself, the 28 to 130, or, yeah, 135 F4. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, we, yes, at NEB we showed a mock-up of this lens. So this is, this lens is a, our first really serious professional zoom lens for motion. So it uh, has a large aperture, uh, big entrance pupil, so it's constant f4 for a lens that is very long, up to 135 millimeters. Uh, it will give very beautiful bokeh. Uh, and it has uh, uh, distinct iris zoom and focus rings. It has markings. Uh, and um, very powerful smooth motion capability. Uh, this lens also will be available hopefully later this year. Right. Now it has the manual control on it, but there's still digital functionality with it? Exactly, yes. So this is also a, a servo zoom lens, so it can be controlled electronically as well. And having like optical image stabilization? It does. <laughs> yes, so it does have optical image stabilization, uh, it has all of the things that you would like to see on a, on a, on a lens of this quality. Right. So, a couple years ago, you came out with a great uh, F3PL lens that kind of covered some of those functionality. That was priced at, for, for F3 shooters at around 10000 Do you have any expectation of where the cinema lens might fall in? Well, this, this lens would not be priced at such a high price. So this will be um, more reasonably priced. It'll be very accessible for its capabilities. And, and mainly at like the FS700 and, and other Exactly. E so shooters. this is a lens that is designed to go with the FS700. Uh, it will go on the 7S also. Uh, so it is uh, adequately priced. And these lenses, uh, quite frankly, are um, 
better than they deserve to be for the kind of money that we sell them, uh, the, the, what we charge for them. And, and part of that is the economy of scale. So these lenses uh, go on both the SLRs, uh, uh, on the mirrorless cameras, the still cameras, or on these camcorders. We have a high volume, so the economy of scale kicks in and we're able to offer these lenses at an at a economical price. These lenses are all electronically driven, uh, and uh, this is a big benefit, because when you have a lens that is mechanically uh, driven, it is very, very costly to design, uh, it's heavy, and then there are compromises made, uh, how many groups and how many elements you can move within the lens. But if you're servo control, uh, then you can move the elements in, within the lens ind independently and it can be done very precisely and achieve incredibly high quality without making a lens that is un unwieldy in size or weight or in price. Uh, so we're offering unbelievable capability on a very compact and precise package. Well, and that's one thing that I was discussing with uh, some of the other associates here. Um, you know, a lot of people complain that there isn't an f2.8 option for a zoom lens, but that would increase the size and price, but mainly the size, dramatically in order to get to that constant aperture over that range. But there are, there are uh, we, we keep introducing lenses, um, and uh, we moved the factory where from where it was originally. We have a re, uh, very modern factory, uh, and we are producing a very high volume, and they're introducing um, many lenses each year, and there are lenses coming out that are very fast. And there are lenses, there are fast lenses from our partners. So the cow size uh, Tuit lenses are F1.8, uh, and they're very small and beautiful and make unbelievable images. And Sony is also making fast lenses as well. So you will see more zooms and more primes from Sony and more high quality ones and faster. Yeah, because you um, you have a great lineup of alpha lenses and I, I've just seen recently the uh, the email lens line has been growing exponentially um, and, and especially with uh, the lineup of full frame uh, cameras that you have available, there's a new line of full frame lenses that are also being available for that as well. Exactly. So with the introduction of the full frame mirrorless cameras with the e-mount, uh, it will also supplement. Uh, those lenses are fully compatible with the FS700 as well as Super 35, other Super 35 millimeter cameras that may come in the future. And uh, because the lens is designed for a full frame and we're only using a smaller space, now that's a sweet spot of the lens. It's even a nice, the, the best part of the glass. So it's an exquisite kind of uh, performance. And think about it. An A7R has 36 million pixels. If the lens has any kind of um, softness or distortion or anything on it, that will be immediately apparent on the image. So when you're looking at now 4K, this lens is truly extraordinary what it can develop, it could deliver on a 4K recording. Well, thanks so much for your time, Juan. Thank you so much for your interest. Special thanks to our sponsors for making our coverage possible. 